Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. It is the Monday Mayhem Wrap-Up. I am Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter here in the wonderful Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And we are talking about how everything is wonderful in WWE wrestling and whatever other wrestling we want to talk about. And uh, I am not alone. Mad Mike is on his return from his uh, time away in New Orleans, probably looking for Elias on uh you know out there on the on the, on the is it the strip is it new orleans strip is that what it is out there i think that's what is it is. that is that is that i don't know i didn't go to that wrestlemania <laughs> but nick fair is with us announcer hey. ring announcer extraordinaire from black diamond wrestling and wherever the hell else he pops up these days oh god I'm you're around here. a bit yeah you're, you're you're getting out there we just you just talked about it. is your one year anniversary in wrestling yeah one year today so Remind me again. I can't remember. Did we do an Indie Mayhem show with you or anything? We did a... I think we did an Indie Mayhem show, but we didn't really talk much. Like, we... It was me, Mad Mike, you, and I think somebody else Oh, that else was, was, that was another show, probably. It was the one before WrestleMania. So, wait. So, how did you find yourself... Real quick version, because we're not doing that show. How did you find yourself ring announcing for wrestling? Uh, I hit up Jack Pollock online. Jack Pollock. Yeah, good has, guy. Jack Pollock has recruited half of Pittsburgh area indie <laughs> wrestling, probably, from what I understand. If you if you saw Breakfast with Champions over on uh, Indie Wrestling Network, I haven't had. Oh. Uh, there we go. I haven't had a chance to actually take a look at it. Sorry, I had to grab the water. It's okay. Um, he's going off mic. He's, he's, he's uh, of mic. course. I just t- said he's a professional ring announcer, and then he's going off mic. <laughs> Sometimes you need that drink of water, <laughs> mm-hmm. R-True style. Mm-hmm. Um, no, but I, t- I hit him up, and then he just told me basically like you need to if you really want to do this. You need to start talking to bookers. Mm-hmm. So I started talking to a couple people, and then I ended up getting in contact with Zach Hunter, who isn't a booker but an amazing wrestler. And um, from there, he told me who to talk to, got me in contact with Rick Diamond and uh, Black Diamond Wrestling, and they gave me my first opportunity. There you go. And, and here you since. are, and now he's on a podcast. Right. Hanging with me. Always fun. <laughs> uh, but anyways, I like to listen. We know where this is going to go, guys. You know how it's going to go. I know some of you out there are actually anticipating how this is going to go. I'm really sad that Mad Mike. Mad Mike has not been watching wrestling this weekend and actually having a good time. And, man, I can't wait for him to figure out what he's missed if he hasn't already. Um, But uh, so so it was a good weekend. Myself, I got to go uh, check out some of our uh, friends at KSWA uh, for a a benefit show they were doing for Children's Miracle Network out Mm -hmm. in um, uh, lower borough it, it was this is the second weekend in a row and i can't think that i have ever done this watched wrestling in a fire hall really? like in the where the trucks get parked i've uh, never done that you, before that's and now it's two weekends in a row it's great that's crazy because <laughs> you always hear about like oh with the fire department and stuff it uh because last week it was the uh, uh dan polinski show with uh sam adonis and um and and uh uh, Jason Tyler, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, main eventing that one, you know, nice six match thing. We we just actually just released it uh, in the last like 24 hours on the network. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they let us come out and film that. And um, this weekend was with KSWA. And it was a lot more room. <laughs> so, uh, but it's just it's a fun show and and it's really cool. And we there's some clips on my Sor- on Sorgatron Twitter uh, over there, and I think on my Facebook if you want to check that out. Um, it's just I I love those shows and I love that vibe. You know, you and I we went to the one the Sheridan one over here, mm-hmm. uh, and they're coming back in a couple weeks. And I I love I also love when wrestling is like a couple miles away from me, right. <laughs> and I don't have to drive like an hour south of town. Right. <laughs> like I, I I was I can't remember where I was, but I was on my way home from somewhere, and the first time I ever went to the Sheridan show I was like. The Langley, five minutes from my house. Like, what? What? What is what? this? Yeah, I, well, I even I felt I felt bad because I'm like, well, Rise Wrestling is doing like Four Courts Festival, but I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, but that's like a sixty dollar ticket and and stuff, and we're doing Black Diamond, so. But it's just right. like it's so close. I should be there, right? Right, but I don't know. But that that's where I'm at. <laughs> uh, we talked about last week how somebody asked me like how I go to wrestling after I'm involved so much with wrestling. Like, mm-hmm. dude, it's every day, right? You know, I I I don't do it. I don't think I do a day without 
watching working something with wrestling. Right, and I, I and honestly, like it's not even not even going to shows, but even just like sitting down watching it on TV, especially mm-hmm. with all that we have now. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm getting tired of that product, that WWE product, I'm. <laughs> I mean, or there's a million things on that network or exactly. you know, not even looking at like, OK, oh, hey, women wrestling. I just saw like three episodes of women wrestling is up on access. Like, mm-hmm. Man, I got to watch that. Oh, I need to watch last week's NXT. Right. You know, like all that stuff. You know? But that's I mean, that's your way of like, you know, I, not, and I can't say personally for me because I'm only you know, I'm, I'm not working everywhere yet. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully one day. Book Nick Farah. <laughs> It's the opportunity. I'm taking Ronnie. Wait, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> hold on. Well, it's working for Ronnie. I don't know if we're done with it yet, but. Um, no, but like uh, for you and, you know, you and your team that are all over and you're mm-hmm. filming all over this place, it, it's a, it's your way of, you know, unwinding. Mm-hmm. And even for me, like, you know, with the little bit of the, I'm, you know, I'm doing right now, it's nice to actually sit down and watch and, you know, watch an episode of Raw or go mm-hmm. back on the network and mm-hmm. look at old pay per views. And it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's nice. It's relaxing. It's Some crazy. people don't see that. And I'm like, it's that's crazy. Violence. Yeah. <laughs> But you know, it's the thing you want to be around. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, good time. They had a uh, um, uh, grave consequences with Black Diamond. There was a buried alive oh. show. But the first Black Diamond I went to, I was telling you about, was probably about uh, about a year and a half ago, mm-hmm. and it was a gra- it was a buried alive match. And their set is awesome. There's plenty of oh. video up there um, on on the Black Diamond uh, website. I'm sorry, Facebook page. And um, and we have some clips and stuff uh, over on uh, IndieWrestling.us as well, uh, YouTube and Facebook. But uh, that was fun. It was a really good show. Uh, a lot of energy. A lot of a lot of fun there. Uh, a, lot a lot of clips. Of destruction. Go to, a lot of destruction. <sighs> they destroyed the set. Uh, so there's a, there's a video of that over on their Facebook page. So uh, and again, that's going to be on the network. It's uploading right now. Processing probably by now. Mm. Um, but uh, go check that out. It, it's it's just it's one of those like it's out it's out there. You know, on the West Virginia panhandle, it's just mm-hmm. like, you know, sometimes I'm just like, why am I driving to West Virginia? Then, then they have a show like that, and it's like, oh, that's why I'm here. You know, that's it, it's exactly it. You know, it's something to have fun. You right. Know? And it, it's also one of those things, like, and you know, I, I think with West Virginia in general, where we're at for the Diamondplex, it's perfect. Like, it, it gives it, for many people who don't know that was Charlie Manson's middle school. Mm-hmm. So there's that history behind it, and you know, even with the bad history behind it, people still follow that. If you ever have an opportunity to go down, check out Black Diamond Wrestling at the Diamond Plex. Was that 16 Marshall Street? <laughs> doing I'm doing the plug. See, doing after, the plug. after he pl- plugged the network with all the wrong information <laughs> a couple uh, shows ago, he's been really big on the details. Yeah, you got to get the details so, down. After he was live on pay per view, high pay per view, <sighs> saying the wrong stuff. Nine ninety nine. <laughs> Although the greatest, I still think the greatest thing is when you said that network was seven ninety nine, mm-hmm. and somebody said that's too much, and somebody yelled in response, "That's, that's not, not enough. enough." It's not. I so, mean, and you did that a little bit because you, you compared it to Netflix, and it's like there's a lot more on Netflix, buddy. And it's just <laughs> like, well, yeah, it's fucking Netflix. But, uh, anyways, enough about that uh, because everybody's going on about stuff. Uh, Fame. Famed intellectual Charlie Manson says Rob. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, anyways, so that's wow. Uh, that's just the comments. Everybody's going off about Raw. Tina did not watch Raw. Um, I, I think you're okay for it for the most part. You'll see the you'll see the clips on Fox Sports. Um, mm. <laughs> let's be honest about this. But I I think the biggest response, and I'm really sad that Mad Mike is is in the air and. And uh, not able to participate in this. And mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe we'll have to do a special edition rant session. Since we are going to be live a pit fight tomorrow. Uh, so no regular show at 9. We'll be, um, hopefully, if everything works out, live at 6 oh. from Greensburg. Okay. Uh, and hopefully have some friends uh, uh, part of it, too. I think Ronnie's going to be with us on that because he'll be he's on the show because hashtag book Ronnie worked. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. uh, but anyways, the, the point is, um, um, listen. Putting the crowd and the viewers through 20 minutes plus of red tinted TV. You know how many people think is like bought a new TV on Amazon right away? Uh, what the hell is wrong <laughs> with my TV? You know, and, and hopefully, hopefully we're able to cancel it. Um, that's your first mistake. Yeah. It, 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 and geez, I like, listen, I, I, I talked about this a little bit. I, I forget on which social media platform. Red is an emotional killer. 
Yes. Right? Yeah. And red is also one of the first things they told you to avoid when you were doing broadcast um, mm-hmm. classes. <laughs> and I they, mean, that match was – I mean, I pulled over on the side of the road because I wanted to at least watch it. And we, we, we're going to slide by the fact that you pulled over to watch the match. I did because I wanted this like, OK, uh, he was driving somewhere and pulled over to watch. I it. was on my way home from Black Diamond and I was like, what time is it? it what ir- well, before I go any further with it, what irritated me was the show ended early. I don't get that. and I didn't even know because I got home around six four, or nine forty five mm-hmm. and started from start. Oh, yeah. So I had no semblance of how far in the show I was. Mm-hmm. So, well. And, and successfully avoided social media yeah. to watch the show. I'm really glad I did so yeah. I could ride the emotions just like everybody else did. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. The the show itself, the fact that they really, what was it? Like there was only three or four matches announced prior to like what, Saturday night? And then they were just like, oh yeah, here's your card. Mm-hmm. That irritated the crap out of me. That's weird. That's Weird. not like them, especially for how big of a week they just had. I, 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 I responded to somebody with the poster of December, to, uh, December to December, because mm-hmm. <laughs> they did a similar thing there. Uh, the last ECW pay per view uh, that was real, real bad. Mm-hmm. Um, I, okay, so there's that, and they started really well with the women. Mm-hmm. The women's match was amazing. Oh yeah, right, or at least at least very good. Um. And maybe I was just still on the high from the show that I was just at. But, yeah, still, like, good vibes going into that. Yeah. Like, wow, this is a great way to start the show. And we went into uh, another very good women's match later on. Actually, both women's matches. Uh, the best stuff was the women's matches. Yeah. Um, nothing was bad, but everything felt like good Raw. Yeah. Right? Good, A good Monday Night Raw. Uh, Which is I, weird because they said something. I can't remember who posted it, but um, they said something along the lines of, it felt like Friday Night SmackDown was on a was a pay per view on fast forward, mm-hmm. but then Hell in a Cell felt like like you just said like a really good Raw. Yeah, yeah. And, and we and talking about this going in is just like guys, the formula is going to be different because of this premiere. They're on Fox. They have all the support. They have more eyeballs than they've ever had before. Right. Um. This is, and I don't. I think they slipped. I think they definitely slipped. Yeah. Uh. The crowd. They did. The, the crowd did not uh, reciprocate. Um, no. No. So, so maybe you didn't watch this. <laughs> but And also, nobody was on the show tonight. Nobody from that match was on the show tonight. No. They showed a little bit of it of like, hey, this happened. Huh. See, that, that I don't, I don't know. That, I don't know what that says. I don't know this by, by design. It was a big match. I think he cooled him off for a couple weeks. Um, but then does the heat die from that? Because like all you had so much building up to it. And mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. it was for, the marquee thing you sold the entire show. On. Yeah. And then the match ends like that. And mm-hmm. then all you do is a little highlight reel right towards the end of the show. And then you get nothing. Mm-hmm. There's no explanation. There's no mm-hmm. update on mm-hmm. who died. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it just it, it really it doesn't make sense to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that. And, and a lot of people don't like it. I like the red cell. But the red lighting was giving me a headache. The light was too time. much. Light was too much. It, it was annoying. Hurt people's eyes. Like, like I can't imagine what it would be like to watch it like that. I, yeah. I don't think. I think half the half the audience probably was not able to see it, especially up in the nosebleeds. Yeah, you know? I mean that's uh, you're you're killing somebody's entire spectrum. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's so there's that, and the fact that we had a DQ. And, you know, good point of the, oh, we killed Seth's finisher. I was like, yeah, but he's a monster. He's Jason. Sure. Um, and I know if Mike was here, he's going to say that they booked themselves out of the corner. And this was them getting out. It's like, yeah. Um, I think we're fine until there was a DQ. Well, was that considered as a DQ or a no contest? They called it a D. Uh, apparently, in retrospect, it was it's labeled as a DQ. Let me double check. I think... D- uh, if we look at WWE results from the show, mm-hmm. um, I think from my understanding um, that that was like officially a, a DQ called it on maybe social media or something like okay. that. So, um, but again, you know, you look at it and it's like, well, the whole point is the fiend is looks strong and Just great. Look at it. Seth didn't lose a thing, but apparently uh, Seth Rollins has met. Ro- what did this happen that, that Seth has met Roman Reigns status? 
because everybody was chanting. Somebody uh, was saying that after they went off air, I think they said that Bray beat them up some more. And uh, they were like, fuck you, Seth. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, things like that being chanted. Uh, so, so it's that crowd was chanting AEW. Oh, yeah. Um, I couldn't make out a lot of it on TV. Um, when there was, was a watching, restart the match one, restart too. the match chance. Who chanted restart the match? <laughs> you know, that's that's a specific chance. Well, see, I think what the whole thing behind it is, and I was talking to you about this earlier, was the fact of the I don't, was it the first Hell in a Cell with Undertaker and Mankind? Mm-hmm. Um, Mankind got thrown through the cell. That was the second. That was the second. The first yeah. one was Shawn Michaels. Like, Shawn and Taker and Kane yeah. showed up. Well, Mankind got thrown through the freaking cell. Mm-hmm. To the canvas. Also, not not the plan. Not no, the plan. Let's, no, let's, no, no. let's make clear. Not the plan. And they were stopping the match and wheeling him out. Yeah. they uh, Taker so. was up on top of the cell. Yeah. And he was like, how the fuck am I getting down? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, it, you know, and then they let the match continue. Mm-hmm. You know, Mick was like, now I'm doing this. Let's, you know, let's finish this match. I think they're saying tonight Bray, Bray attacked in the dark match. Um, yeah. Jack well, Tunney, they had a, it is a good point. Jack Tunney wouldn't have let any of this shit fly. <laughs> good point. Good point. Um, man, man, I'm disappointed. There was so much potential. And I, I thought, you know, yeah. They're probably going to slip a little bit on this, right. but to to and there was like, and I saw glimmers of hope with this. I thought there was some cool things uh, potentially happening in that match. Mm-hmm. I just wish I could see them in full color. Um, <laughs> you know, they were going some interesting places with it. Yeah, the the fiend character is doing some interesting things. Oh yeah, but we muddled it with this one bit of it, and it now colors the entire match. Well, if you go back and you it, watch the dark match from the live show, like mm-hmm. the WWE Live, mm-hmm. and you watch Bray versus Seth, Fiend versus Seth, mm-hmm. he loses by disqualification because he had the mandible claw in the, in the corner. Mm-hmm. But afterwards, after you know, after he breaks free, Seth stomps him five, six times. Yeah, they used that, and that was great. Mm-hmm. I think. Honestly, He's if this would have been a normal match, mm-hmm. one-on-one, and they would have did that same finish, perfect. Mm-hmm. It made sense. But you're in hell in a cell. I know. It's supposed to be no rules. How do you disqualify? Yeah. No, I, I think it's I think it's always a bad, short-sighted mistake when they do something like that. If anything, they should have given the match to Seth and been like, he can't continue. That, that You know what I mean? But at the same time, you're also killing him that way, too. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't think there was a win situation other than Bray going over as champion, winning the title, and then see where he goes from there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I don't think I don't think they're willing to make the creative chance on that, at least on the WWE level. Yeah. You know, there's something I noticed, and I know this commercials run for several weeks, but it, it I think it yells at us in our face a little bit today. When they run the NXT ad, and is the one they were running since they st- uh, announced the debut on USA, mm. where um, it says "No BS, join the club." So it's counter programming <laughs> against main it's- WWE. Say, hey, if you think Monday night's bullshit, come watch what we're doing on Wednesdays. Yeah, but if you've been watching NXT for. You know, as long as it's been on the WWE network, mm-hmm. you would know that by now. Oh, absolutely. But the whole point is they're opening it up to more people. Yeah. Uh, you know, that would have cable versus, uh, you know, pay for a subscription. Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, they would, that's opening that up. Yeah. But um, I, 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 it just, it just screams of like, like, yeah, hey, a lot of people don't like this. By the way, we have the alternative over here. Right. Don't, what other alternative? <laughs> <laughs> See, and that's why, I like, and I'm not a big fan of the whole Wednesday Night Wars thing because I like NXT. I like the product they do. And from what I've seen with AEW with their pay-per-views and then, you know, Wednesday Night Dynamite, the premiere last week, I really enjoyed that as well. I don't want to, f- you know, and, and everyone's going to say, oh, go on a network and watch it later. 
I like to watch it live. I do, but again, NXT, I'm already programmed in my head to watch NXT afterwards, and and it's like the AEW. I'm excited on the, on the new shiny. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I haven't watched NXT yet. Other than I did watch the 15 minute overrun <laughs> after yeah. AEW was done, so I did see that. I've seen the highlights, you know, as they've shown up, but I do want to go back and watch the show. Right. Um. And and. I don't know. Maybe there'll be an option for that. Maybe maybe I will flip it up and watch NXT then AEW on Wednesday nights, yeah. you know, or something, right. you know. I, but uh, I wanted to watch AEW live for the first one because I oh, didn't yeah. know what TNT does for like their on demand. Do I get it the next day or a week later? Because right. you know, I've seen some of the, some of these be real weird about those. Right, right. So I, I wanted to make sure, like, okay, is this a way that I could do this? Will I watch AEW on Thursday mornings if I like have to work on a Wednesday yeah. for a project or something? Right. God forbid around here there's wrestling on Wednesdays because <laughs> there's a wrestling on a Tuesday tomorrow, guys. So right. And Thursday later this month. And, geez, I think in the same week I'm going to Cleveland for Raw, um, AEW on Wednesday here, and Wrestle Rex down on the south side. You're... Not to mention what I'm working. Wow. Because we definitely have a show the Saturday before and after. <laughs> <laughs> and I think KSWA is that Sunday right before too. Yeah, you, you me and you were talking. Oh man, what is it, 12, 12 that events? will be f- that will be th- four, five events in six days. Oh my god, that will be yep, yep. I mean, it's great. Like I love it. It's just trying to keep up with it all uh-huh. now. I didn't realize. Funny thing, I didn't have. I didn't realize I had access TV. So I'm sitting there at home the other day and uh, last week and it was Tuesday night and I'm like, okay, like, you know, SmackDown this week. Like, what am I going to do? I'm scrolling through and all of a sudden I see TNA Mm -hmm. and I'm like, I have this channel. I can watch (laughs) wrestling. I didn't even because Tuesday night's been taken over for so long that you don't even go looking. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're just scrolling through, and it was uh, was the show from January they were replaying. Mm-hmm. And I got to see LAX versus Lucha Brothers, and that nice. was a phenomenal match. Nice. Such it good was... stuff there. It, it's you know, I think it pays off now, you know, again, to put something on, uh, throwing the Twitch on. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of this stuff, when you're not, like, in it from week to week, all the stuff that we, like, hated when we were sitting there watching it week to week, SmackDown, Raw, TNA, whatever, mm-hmm. go back, like, you know, I watched a clip of – I don't know if I mentioned on the show it was a uh, it was main event mafia and it was Booker T was doing this kind of King Booker ish thing at the yeah. time was on commentary the uh, main event mafia came in and started a beat down he's commentating while he ran in and started kicking somebody <laughs> you know it was the greatest thing I've seen in a while and um and again like back then like we were on the show week to week groaning over it's like yeah. oh here got the old guys in suits and sting doesn't have makeup you know and and, yeah. and, and, and but he always had the sunglasses but he always had sunglasses that's right the sweet shades yeah. um but but again like like i think that that works out rob's saying his solution is uh playstation view uh he has that and he has it uh set to record aw but it did the replay instead of the live one weird <laughs> And Ponder said to stay hydrated. <laughs> um, uh, Rob saying, with all the wrestling, I'm finding hard to concentrate or concern myself with stuff I'm not involved with, <laughs> stuff I'm not watching live or really quickly, like the same night at least. Oh, yeah. Rob is also doing like a wrestling show at least every weekend mm-hmm. um, here or in Cleveland <laughs> So at this thing. So time for Impact and WoW and, and New Japan on Saturdays on Access. Yeah, uh, yeah. Tuesday for Impact, uh, WoW and New Japan on Saturdays. We're on demand when you get to. Uh, the other thing is all those shows are pre taped Yeah, and New Japan is so you have like less urgency on those. Same with Ring of right. Honor, I feel. Um, you know, it's just like a check in when I have time kind of thing. Right. So. But like, and it, it just it everything that you have nowadays, like it. I hate to put it like this, but you don't have to watch Raw anymore. Like, if you don't like it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, it's one of those things where, like, you ever see a dog that's so ugly that it's cute? Oh, where is this going? That was, that's been Raw for the past couple months. Mm -hmm. Actually, for a long time now. Now, Raw, so, I mean, I don't think anything, okay, wait. I was going to say, I don't think anything was real bad, but I realized I missed the part and they replayed it. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Other than that, I know but mostly across the board, match wise, story stuff, setting up for this draft uh, as a weird kind of tweener episode. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's good stuff on there. There's matches I wanted to see. There was entertaining stuff. I just can't. 
I can't dedicate to watching it. I mm-hmm. but I'll I'll be present but not aware. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like, right. And I think that's it. We're all watching Ron and Clay's. It's a thing we do. Um, but when something catches your eye, something catches your eye. Mm-hmm. I was really happy about the last woman standing match tonight. Like, oh I was like, yeah, that's a great idea. That was that, that was good. Like you, you have gimmicks, you have things, you have uh, the chance versus champs in a women in the women's mm-hmm. division. Uh, and oh, yeah. unfortunately, I think we were conversing. I didn't get to pay too much attention. I remember Missy looked up and said, "Why is Becky's face green?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, Miss thing." And she started that yeah. last night, uh, Oscar. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, it, 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 and that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> it was it was fine. Uh, Matt's saying, Carlin's is saying, New Japan has a fresh show uh, this morning, much needed after last night. Again, he's on that night shift, so that works out really, really well for him. Super Jacob have not. I was actually literally looking at the New Japan listings to see what I needed to watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, Again, the women's matches were the best thing, and it, it is. Yeah. It was last night. It was tonight. The women are killing it, and yeah. I don't know if it's complacency with whoever's booking the men. Or uh, you know, now, 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 don't get me wrong. And I know a lot of people are really pissed about uh, SmackDown. I didn't realize that we had a problem with SmackDown until sometime Saturday when I read the tweet, and I was then I looked. I'm like, oh, we had a problem with SmackDown. Wait, what did so, I miss? Um, did you watch SmackDown? I watched bits and pieces of okay. it. So, I mean, it was a very kind of introductory, hey, this is who our champions are. Check out our women's division, and let us, let's tell you about how important they are, and mm-hmm. this, and here's Bray Wyatt, and this, and this, right? Yeah. By the way, we have a pay-per-view. At least these couple matches are happening. Um, right. So, we're set up for that, plus the um, the Gypsy King thing that we, we led to tonight with Braun. Mm-hmm. And um, we had Brock versus Kofi. Yeah. And Kofi got taken murdered. out. Yep. Got murdered. Murderized. Which, but... <sighs> But to do that, to have Brock disappear for a couple months, I'd be pissed. Yeah. But to have that to immediately set up him and Kane Velasquez, that was see, that, that was is good. You you may I've been waiting a week to say, or I've been waiting four days to say this. You we all will hate Kofi getting jobbed out. Yeah. Like I I hate it. Yeah. I hate it. But. I am excited and also see WWE seeing the money um, in Velasquez versus Brock. I'm seeing probably a Survivor Series, hopefully not in the desert. But can I can I give you my problem with the whole Kofi jobbing out? Is that every match, okay, a lot of the matches, because I can't say it with the whole John Cena thing, because he got, that was the beginning of Suplex City. Mm-hmm. But take a look at Brock Lesnar versus Daniel Bryan. Mm-hmm. Prime example, you went in there thinking, oh, God, Daniel Bryan's going to get murdered. Mm-hmm. And for the first five, six, seven minutes, Daniel Bryan's getting the shit kicked out of him. And then all of a sudden, well, okay, after he ran around the ring. But all of a sudden, now Daniel Bryan's on the offensive. Mm-hmm. And he's, you know, pulling Brock to the corner, whipping his legs off the post, low-blowing him. Like, yeah. yeah. why is it that one F5 killed Kofi? Yeah. I just, I don't... Maybe a little too much, but also TV time remaining. Uh, yeah, true. <laughs> but either way, it's just like when Kofi went under for, what was it, to set up Rock and Cena? Uh, it's just like when CM Punk went under uh, under the set up. Uh, no, no, Kofi went under to set up Goldberg and Brock. And then yeah, that was right. Uh, CM Punk went under to set up Rock versus Cena for the title. Right. So as much as we love owens and punk and kofi yeah they will not whether they are not given the chance to but right now if you say you know put on paper if i put kofi doing this as survivor series versus hey we got Kane velasquez yeah let's do this you're gonna lose that math right. anytime you started with this you have literally they are on smackdown with fox sports microphones yes yeah. What the fuck? That was see, I love that. <laughs> so if that doesn't tell you where this is going, this is a different show. The W uh, I don't know if I it should say the this a, It is the A show. It is and WWE all the way back to Rock and Wrestling WrestleMania 1 will always go for the celebrity headline, oh, yeah. celebrity and headlines before anything else cuz that's what moves the needle forward for them. Yep. That is the formula that has worked for them. For thirty five years, yeah. if and my anything math is that's right. going to keep pulling money in for them is going to be great. Yes, and that means 
Kofi still has a job. Yes. <laughs> and Kofi will still get paid well for being in the spot he is and moving the merchandise he does because mm-hmm. more eyeballs are more dads are tuning in because Kane Velasquez is there and their kids are going to be like, this Kofi guy's pretty cool. Buy me his toy. Yeah. That's, that's the formula. Yeah. That is the formula. Wow. You know, this I is corporatized. Remember, WWE is not wrestling. It's corporatized sports entertainment. Yeah. So us wrestling fans are fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Go watch NXT so we can give them money somewhere else. Right. Uh, Nick, any other thoughts on tonight other than I don't even want to talk about the, the, the relationship stuff with with um, new sexual chocolate. Uh, <laughs> Bobby Lashley. <laughs> I don't know. It's 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 something to get us talking. That's for sure. You know, what? It, uh, that that was uh, I, I didn't see it live. But, I, you know, when they brought the highlight, up, I was like, oh, what did I miss? And, mm-hmm. you know, Mad Mike's going to be pissed off about that when he finally sees it he's gonna be like what the hell like this is this is the shit that he that he absolutely hates Mm -hmm. and they're doing it more and more and more Mm -hmm. ah i just i don't know how to feel about it they're trying to drive these other fans yes it's like they're trying to specifically drive us complaining fans over to nxt so we shut up so the (laughs) general fans can be the only ones talking about mondays right (laughs) <laughs> I mean, if you, uh, I hate to put it like this, but if you put boobs in any guy's face. You know what, man? I had a conversation with a fellow that I used to do a music project with mm-hmm. that there was something happening. It was with the divas. and It was something like some sexy blah, blah, blah thing. And I was like, oh, God, this is the worst. And this is the shits. You know, what is this? Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, I love it when she's on there. You know, I'll, I'll watch any time. You know, it's just like, oh, oh. You're who they're talking to, and there's probably more of you spending money with this. Not to put down that person, but I, but that that person is here for this yeah. this part of the equation. Well, as much as it sucks to say it like this, that fans st- like th- those fans still exist. Mm-hmm. You know the the whole attitude era and sex sells and everything. Those fans still exist, and uh, unfortunately, you know they're going to continue bringing money into the product as well. So I think, you know, WWE is kind of at a hard point where, like, yes, we want to do the we want to continue with the women's revolution, Mm -hmm. which there is absolutely no reason why they should ever quit. Mm -hmm. If they quit that, they're stupid. Mm -hmm. And Angel Gate would be happy to take any of you guys. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But um, anyways, but there's still that fan, Mm -hmm. which I mean, at the end of the day, having people like, you know, Lana or before she was pregnant, Maria, mm-hmm. those those ones that, you know, bring in Trish Stratus in on occasion, that's what's going to sell. And that's what's going to continue bringing that market in. But at the same time, it's also one of those things of then you have these new fans that I want to see these women go out there and kick the fuck out of each other. And I'm one of them. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, they got porn online like i don't need to watch some girl get half naked on tv mm-hmm. for my entertainment if you're going into a wrestling ring i want to see you beat the shit out of each other i want to i want to see you make it worth it you know what i mean and the whole evolve i mean not evolve uh evolution um pay-per-view that they had all women's pay-per-view that was phenomenal mm-hmm. that honestly it, it outranked some of the guys i wish they were doing it again it's funny because they're talking about it on total divas we've seen the preview after Raw, before while we're setting up um, from that, so oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's attitude area stuff that people claim they want. We'll see how that goes with them. Uh, there's a conversation between uh, Carl and Tina about um, Kofi not doing, moving the needle, and and was he even given an opportunity to? I think by having him on TV, but I think no matter how good Kofi was doing, and Kofi, I think on is all around a resounding success. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm not again, not knowing the corporate numbers of what he's doing, what money he makes on paper. Right. Um, so but again, even if Kofi uh, short of becoming John Cena in the last six months, <laughs> short of becoming John Cena after three years. Yeah. In the last six months, because um, he definitely was not at close to that point even with the success new day has been having yeah. as just kofi speaking of which who's the tag team champions on smackdown right now tag team champions on smackdown are the revival okay never mind then i know none of them were on um 
the pay per view last night. So, because <laughs> I was gonna say, if the New Day were still tag team, which shows how much farther I'm behind, New Day were still tag team champions, and Kofi lost the WWE title, mm-hmm. would the Freebird effect? Well, that that is like just like tag team buried alive. The point is to book everything so you never have to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyways. Uh, they're bringing back the May Young Classic in November. Wonderful. Nice. I can't wait to see more familiar faces <laughs> that end up in AEW. Um, <laughs> WWE but, burn. Those mm-hmm. are rare. Oh, that, dude, I'll burn everybody. <laughs> I, I don't, I'm lighting, I'm lighting the wrestling on fire, uh, this week. Uh, anyways, so it's sad that we only have one show like this right <laughs> tomorrow has to be nice because it's for charity yeah <laughs> but no those guys are great uh yep. yeah we'll be out there if you guys are in the pittsburgh area please come out uh, again look up uh the pit fight uh page with uh university of pittsburgh greensburg uh campus uh, that's like i don't know what's that 45 mm. minutes out of downtown yeah here i go driving out of town for wrestling again and to do a podcast Three seventy six twenty two. take it what 376 to 22. She's Take saying it. numbers. Nobody knows what the fuck you're talking about. If you're She's from in Pittsburgh, Seattle. You know. He's in New He's in that guy was in Bakersfield tonight. <laughs> they don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Hey, Bakersfield. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> I almost went to Bakersfield for a midget show once. Oh and then I was like, I've done enough driving. <laughs> I got to go to the desert tomorrow. <laughs> Although midget wrestling is awesome. I think it was my first time. I think it was my first time in California. I almost went to Bakersfield. But nice. I didn't know how far everything was on my head. <laughs> I'm like, I'm driving a lot. What am I doing? <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know. At work, boo. <laughs> Thank you. This is a podcast. We do it from time to time here on Facebook Live. Uh, Nick, where can uh, Nick things be found? You can find me on Instagram at that one guy from Pittsburgh. Uh, <laughs> you love it. You know love you love it. I love how bad it is. <laughs> like, why Why can't I tag Nick on this thing that we just did? Because I never remember. We got we to gotta rebrand you, man, if you're going to be announcer, dude. Uh, you, need an, you need announcer, dude. Don't be that one announcer from Pittsburgh either. No, I won't be. Uh, okay, you know what? I will come up because I have what a week now till next Monday. Mm-hmm. Okay, by next Monday, yeah. you will have a new tagline for me. I will for Instagram. I mean, you don't need to rename like you just need like a worker account. You know what I mean? Be like, this I, is where I talk about wrestling shows. This is where I talk about Ninja Turtles. Unless I'm Ronnie Starks. Well, I mean, <laughs> give it time. <laughs> you never know what the future holds. Rebranding. Um, Potter is translating uh, your directions into Pittsburghese in the chat room. Yeah. Uh, uh, Pittsburghese, get into care. Uh, maintain your speed through them tubes. and uh, Watch out for them tunnel monsters. Yeah, don't be a jag off either. Um, yeah, that's it. And you know where the Toys R Us used to be? <laughs> <laughs> they turn there. Turn left and go out eight miles. If you go to a stop sign, you've gone too far. But there's eight stop signs. Well, then just... Don't go past the first one. If you see signs for a toll road, hey, fuck that. <laughs> There's ways around it. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. And you can hear Nick yelling into a microphone and commentating, too. Yes. <laughs> yelling into that microphone. Uh, over there, a lot of clips over there on the YouTube of Indie Wrestling.us uh, Facebook and a Black Diamond uh, Facebook page as well. And, of course, that full show coming up very shortly. Probably by the time a lot of you hear this on the on the podcast feed over at IndieWrestling.network. Grave consequences. Um, what is happening? Again, we'll be at Pit Fight. Uh, we will also be having good guys on Indie Wrestling, uh, Indie Mayhem show. Uh, finally getting one of those together. Yeah. Sorry, my schedule's been kind of crazy. And um, and, uh, and and I don't know. Man, Mike wants to have a, a Wednesday Mayhem Wednesday. Maybe we'll do that. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, and other than that, keep an eye out. Uh, Friday night fight night. Friday night fight society is going to be That's Friday, wonderful. and uh, look out for that. Look out for the stream. I'm not keeping a secret anymore. Uh, we're streaming the show, so go check that out. But of course, the best thing is to be there live. Also, Rise Wrestling with a Y will be Saturday night, uh, continuing the Rise of a Contender Championship. I think we have Derek Direction and Jinx is a match. No, 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 that's that's not right. I need to double check. No, it was, actually, it's Derek Direction and Brandon K. I think is one of the matches. 
So, but I know the tournament does include PB Smooth, Jinx, Lawless. No, Lawless didn't win, and I don't know a couple other, a couple other guys. <laughs> so, um, these graphics aren't in front of me, but there's some good stuff going on there. And then, um, by the way, a may- an original Mayhemer is getting married on Sunday. Hmm. If anybody remembers DJ Lunchbox, he is getting married. So I'm sure there'll be plenty of Facebook posts from that. I think I got my weeks right. I don't know. Is this the week? Is this a Sunday for KSWA or the weekend for a wedding? I can't remember. I think this is going to be your wedding because I think that's or is the weekend or is it the weekend where we podcast about comic books on Sunday? I I don't know. I don't know. You're too busy. (sighs) You need a vacation again. (laughs) (laughs) You don't know the half of it. I need to vamp one more minute while I set up the outro, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wait for the perfect time. Get it. Don't give up what you want. Take it back. Wait for the perfect time. Get it. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at Sorgatron Media. Good guys, promo videos. A little bit.